Try to zoom in here a little bit. I think I set it up right. Way through um, you know it also you know it seems it spins pretty fast and you might not be able to see what's going on with the coil but you can actually see the coil build um, over the white background and I can also see how the wire lays itself down next to the previously laid wire and that's actually kind of what I part of the wine pattern it revolves around that. Um, it's not necessarily forcing the wire onto the bobbin. The the wire is always going to follow what's laid down before the you know the the current turn, um, which is a bit more natural. But there's no other way around it. Even on an automated traverse machine, you know they're still going to do the same thing. The only thing that you're going to have is a, a dead nuts, you know, turn per layer count, but you're always going to have that randomness as the wire lays down uh, next to the the previously laid wire. What I like about my traverse setup is my patterns are very linear. You know, it, it, it's a neat pattern um, as it, as it's laid down. You know, it, and it's not necessarily a scatter wound. It's more like a hybrid of machine and hand guided. Um, because I, I don't have the diagonal movement, you know, when, when you're hand winding, typically you know, they're moving their thumb back and forth like this on a piece of bar stock and they're moving the wire back and forth. So it's actually kind of whipping it a little bit or if they're going real slow, but really you're trying to move the wire back and forth over something that's a little bit, you know, wider than a quarter inch unless your slide point where you're guiding the wire is moved back farther. As you move it back farther, you can set your traverse limits wider apart. Uh, so you can move the wire back and forth with a greater span, which will give you a little bit more detail if you're trying to get a really neatly wound coil. But you're still going to get the whipping effect. Uh, I didn't like the whipping effect, and that's kind of why I went with this setup here. So I feel I have more control over the wire. Uh, I, I can get a, a more consistent pickup out of it and match the readings that were that are within my specs for my production numbers. Uh, so enough of that. We'll show you the tensioner. Um, I'll wrap up this coil off camera because uh, it's probably boring just sitting here watching this thing spin. Okay, I just finished up this coil here. Um, I'll inspect it a little bit with my magnifying glass. Make sure I'm happy. Um, 
make sure I didn't have anything jumping off, which normally I don't because the machine runs pretty well uh, and the tensioner works. Everything looks good, so we'll take it off here. Uh, I'll pull it back a little bit and pull out some wire for the end lead. And take the tape off of the faceplate here where I have the start lead. Now, some, some guys build a uh, or build their pickups, they'll solder the start lead and actually, I got caught up here, I forgot to do something. Before I take it off, I'll put a piece of tape on here to keep the, the end lead where I want it. And gently push that down so I don't disturb anything. At the end of this, you guys will probably get that uh, I'm kind of picky about things. Doctors call it OCD, but I don't know. My first job ever was when I was 15 and I worked at rallies making hamburgers. And the only thing I took from that place was the manager said, don't make any hamburger you wouldn't eat on your own. So I apply that to everything I do, including pickups. Well, I'm not going to eat a pickup, but you get the idea. So I get that where I want. I'll free up the start lead. And back to what I was saying, uh, some guys build the uh, the bobbin. They'll, they'll solder the start lead and they'll tape it on the inside of the bobbin and then wind around it. Uh, and kind of lock it into place. I don't like to do it that way. Um, just because of how I want to shape the coil. Uh, so I leave it off and I solder it afterwards. Uh, makes it a little trickier, it takes a little bit more time. Um, I feel it's worth it. That's what I do. So pull the clamp off here. screw bobbins it's always a little tighter because my screws are pretty close to the size of the hole so it doesn't move around and the reason I clamp them this way wasn't just a way to hold it I, I guess I could you know, two-sided tape the bobbin there because they, they don't really move around a whole lot um, but I clamp it because depending on what tension setting I'm, I'm running or if I'm going to run a lot of tension as the coil builds on the bobbin, the wire will actually stack next to it on the on the ends here. And what will happen is it will keep stacking and stacking and it will push down even though you have a traverse limit of where the wire should stop. And what will happen is it will bow up the sides of the bobbin. Now on this tension setting, it, it, it doesn't really bow them, but if I'm running something with, excuse me, a real high tension, uh, the clamp that I made, which is the same size as the bobbin, um, will avoid that. It will keep it nice and straight, and that way when you put it together you don't have a banana shaped bobbin. Um, so this coil is all done here, and you can see it's, it's nice and neat. Um, my tensioner is doing his job, so there's not a lot of, uh, not a lot of bulge in the side. Uh, this is 42 wire for this build here. So that's one coil here. Um, next video I think I'll do a little solder and tape these up. Uh, I'm gonna let them sit. I, I never solder and tape them up right after they're done. Um, the winding process they generate a little bit of heat so any readings I take will be off. Uh, so I let them sit for about 24 hours and this will allow the coil to settle down a little bit. 
on the temperature to get to where it's at. Um, as I keep the room here, typically 75 degrees um, for all my production stuff and dehumidifiers and such to try to control it. Um, so tomorrow we'll move a little bit farther on these and get them put together, show you that stuff and uh, talk a little bit more about the top fuel humbucker. Alright, thanks for watching.